Welcome to X-Men Evolution, episode 34 of Cyclops is Waiting for Me, an X-Men animated recap podcast. I'm Rod, and I'm confused. And that's not like a special today thing. That's a character treat. Yeah, that's just a descriptor at yeah. this point. <laughs> and I'm JC. I've mentioned before, but you could catch me on Sunday nights on Whiskey and Waffles on Twitch. I have opened up the last of my MetaZoo card packs. Now that MetaZoo is resting hopefully in peace oh, uh, CRP. <laughs> yeah and i was showing rod before this episode started recording i'm building one of those like paper craft book nooks that's like laser cut wood and dear god it takes a while to complete those things that it looked it looked great you had like one train car out of an entire diorama done and took you what a couple hours it was like 90 minutes to get half of a train car because it's literally <laughs> cut in half so yes it looks really cool but also terrifying because it's very small pieces i'm going to buy one for rod for christmas just to add to his anxiety (laughs) cyclops is waiting for me as our weekly podcast series we're going back and watching every single x-men animated episode that we can find this podcast started with the original 1992 x-men the animated series building up to the release of x-men 97 which we now know is coming to disney plus less than one week from when this episode goes live on our podcast feeds with two debut episodes we are in the home stretch And just a reminder for those of you who are here for X-Men Evolution, there will be a break for the nine weeks that X-Men 97 is airing. So we're able to recap those, including two on its launch week. God bless you for being the editor on this one, Rod, so that we can recap them on their release weeks. So what's the plan now is to hopefully release on Monday and Tuesday, but we will see what happens with life then. (laughs) Yeah, me being in San Francisco really is not helpful at that point. Yeah, we're also like, I don't know. I know what these episodes have been like because we've only had two series so far. We're entering like a whole new territory of show and format. Yeah, we actually discussion. don't even know how long these episodes are. Like, yeah. are they 22 minutes? Are they like, who knows at this point? Yeah. And how heavy will it be? Or like, are we going to get there? Like, that was cool action scene. Roll credits. <laughs> yeah. I also need to start trying to like see what non spoiler spoilers I can find because we do have a few people who want to like pop in as guests on some of these episodes, mm-hmm. but we don't want to have to like schedule guests with less than 24 hours notice to still give you time to edit the damn episodes as well. Yeah. So this will all be fun. <laughs> it's an adventure. So some quick reminders about this current show. We're a recap show about a series that started over 20 years ago. This last time we're going to be able to say that for a while. For for 10 weeks, yeah. There will be spoilers. If you don't want to spoil it for you, pause the podcast, watch the episode, and come back. I recommend this this run this season is really good so far. So if for some reason you were like uh, Joe Russo yep. back in the other seasons and you don't watch the show. Just Not Marvel's Joe Russo. Yeah, or it could be someday. We might just be like chronologically out of... I out wonder of if he has to like kill the other joe russo and take his power like the one. Oh yeah like it's like highlander or i guess yeah. in the marvel universe it'd be like rogue or carol danvers right you were joe there has- with highlander and then you just <laughs> jumped across that shark rod well I, I, i'm just picturing the joe we know walking up behind the joe that the marvel fans know and just like absorbing his filmmaking essence from behind and putting him to a coma and he, we're currently not sponsored or affiliated with marvel marvel animation disney or disney plus in any way and just based on what I just said, we're not going to get hired to write anything for them. No, we are definitely not going to get hired <laughs> to write anything for them. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Cyclops, IWFM Pod on Instagram, TikTok, Threads, Twitter, and Facebook. And make sure that you are following us on your favorite podcast service and leave a nice comment or, you know, a five-star rating on there. We usually beg for the ratings at the end of the episode, but I'm going to try it at the beginning and see if that number goes up. Yeah, yeah. Bump it up there, especially now that we're getting to the actual show show. And also, you know, not to dig on anybody else, I've noticed a lot of other either podcasts or nerd networks and stuff doing their rewatch now. And like, we've been doing this for literally two years. Dude, there was one, I want to say it was GameSpot, who were showing you the binge order by day of how to get through between the trailer and the series and i'm like i don't think watching 76 episodes in three (laughs) weeks is a great plan personally i i don't know if i would enjoy that yeah especially this show because there's you know as the listeners you know there's been several like eras of just like trauma after trauma and lots of really convoluted kind of like soap opera ish drama and also in the cartoon there's eras of trauma not just the two of us it's a double air now into the show today we're going to be talking about season three episode four titled the stuff of villains it aired october 5th 2002 and currently sits at a 7.1 star rating on imdb the (laughs) i I like the symmetry of the titles episodes it kind of drives me crazy that they're spread apart oh yeah because it was also you did stuff of heroes and then there was a week in between and that became stuff of villains yep it makes sense narratively 
it's right. purely for like the if there was if these were like DVDs or something like the spine orders or whatever. This is the Homer Simpson head of the DVD set. Remember? That? Well, because it was Day of Reckoning, Day of Reckoning, Day of Recovery, yeah. stuff of heroes, mainstream, and then stuff of villains. Yeah, it was like what's that sketch on SNL? Where Kristen Wiig's always the weird sister, and I'm Eunice. <laughs> just going to leave that awkward okay. silence there for you rod yeah. anyway so this is one of the episodes that has it previously on not because it tied directly to the last episode but it very much looked like they wanted to remind you of like magneto's storyline and the wanda stuff especially yeah. yeah and his connection to wanda and that he had survived and pietro was the one that got him out of there also it was xavier's voice this time who did the previously on not scott's yeah. voice so they're just like rotating through the cast at this point i'm guessing either that or it's like whoever had an extra hour in the, in the recording session that week. <laughs> they right. were like, can you do this recap? And once again, they went straight from the recap and segued right into the cold open, like no warning or anything. So in this show, if you haven't already known, don't skip the previous seance because it probably is going to be new material immediately right. after. It opens up with the neon sign of like a really seedy hotel and then pans down to these guys on a stoop in the middle of the night, cat calling Wanda who's walking down the alley. Okay, so gotta point this out. They specifically chose to give one of those guys a Hitler mustache, right? Like that. That that was that was a conscious design choice. It had to be. It was. You don't casually throw that in there unless it's Charlie Chaplin. (laughs) That guy did not look like Charlie. No. (laughs) And even the other guy, it wasn't as thin, but he also had a very like narrow mustache. It wasn't quite a Hitler stash, but but dude, the one who was specifically catcalling and telling Wanda like you got to pay the toll, which obviously they're saying money, but like we know what that's insinuating as adults oh, and stuff also, like that. Extra yeah. gross. Wanda's a teenager. Yes. <laughs> so, and these were clearly very adult men, I think, at least in the way they were animated. Oh no, they were definitely animated to be adults, no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> and so, rightfully so, she like distorts reality around her like makes a lamppost turn to like a snake essentially the car is kind of turned like monster trucks almost and chase after the guys and like this is like one of the few times where like wanda is fully justified in everything yeah. she did she should probably should have killed them so they can't right. do this to other people yeah and she dips off into an alley another cat reference we don't see him this time i know it's like a trope when you go to an alley you hear a cat but this show specifically always makes sure there's like a cat reference in the alleys well, that cat has been named. I think oh, really? we talked about it. It was like <laughs> O'Malley or some shit okay, like that. Yeah, yeah like the, the cat was used enough times in the show that they gave it a name. That's great. And I guess she knows Caliban? Yeah, I, I, was, I was interested in that because like she wasn't with the new mutants when they were out hiding with Caliban. So how does she know about him? And I'm assuming it has something to do with her father. Or maybe yeah, down the road, we'll see some sort of like is that part of how she got captured or was she aligned with him before she got captured? I don't know. Right. Also, but she also specifically knows what he can do. Yeah. And does it also paint a picture that Caliban is like this neutral, like neither good nor evil in this series. Like he doesn't have sides. He's just like, you're here doing no harm to me. So whatever you want. I've always gotten that vibe for Caliban as a, as a character. It's only when he gets like, like that, secondary mutation where he like hulks out and stuff like that that's the only time he ever feels like he's evil whereas on the other side he's just kind of like he's a tracker he's there he's like yeah do what i gotta do and in this so this was interesting because what she wants him to do is what we all assume she wants him to do is to find magneto i'm guessing they're going to talk about the expand on this later but caliban's kind of mysterious about it and saying that he can't do it he starts by saying he won't oh, that's okay. the start I, is he starts by saying he won't and then she surrounds him with the the trash bins and that's where it goes to i can't he's too far advanced so i guess that has to do partially with that end of first season thing it kind of uh, makes sense because the same thing happened with mystique where certain aspects of her like she can't be detected by telepathy anymore. Oh, interesting, yeah. Yeah. Or, I mean, this could be going a step too far. Does it mean that he's not technically a mutant anymore because his whole power is to be a organic version of Cerebro, basically? Oh, okay, yeah. Like, is he beyond a mutant at this point? Yeah, I don't know. But that that was interesting and ominous in this because if this was other, in any other show, I would just have chalked it up to, like, a really 
like bad writing or lazy writing or whatever, but this seemed very purposeful. This show doesn't have lazy writing. I feel like there are certain times where inspirational speeches may not hit the same, like kind of like some of the Xavier stuff, but I don't ever interpret it as lazy. Yeah, especially because now if you listen to the last episode, the the little like small detail of Mystique turning around at the at the psychiatric ward when Wanda is like that wasn't like a small detail or it was like well it that was planted. Yeah. yeah, it was like a purposeful thing that we were supposed to look back on and it connected, not like a visual decision or something. So, yeah, right. I don't know. Is it, like it, it wasn't a retcon because we saw the turnaround happen. Yeah. And so he said, yeah, he says that he can't find Magneto and he's like, if it was anybody else. And she was like, oh, OK, well, I'm on my brother. Yeah. And, you know, we just assume that he said yes, because it just <laughs> it, it, fa- it fades off in that ominous like. Well, because he was very spot. nice about it. He's like, I could do it for anybody else. Who do you want, yeah. basically? And then he's like, oh, him? Yeah. Here's, no problem. He's like, he's like I've, I've already been tracking him. Here's the address. <laughs> She's like, why were you tracking my brother this far in advance? <laughs> like, ah, he's always up to something. As you need. I know where all of you are. That little rascal. Right. He kind of is. Like, he, he'd be... Pietro in this universe especially is probably one of those people that was like, you know what? We should keep tabs on him. He's kind of, he's kind of like a loose cannon. And we don't know what's going to happen next. He's kind of like the kid who plays McLovin in Kick-Ass. <laughs> where it's just kind of like he's always just, just kind of being a pain. It's like, I just don't... I don't trust him. I wish yeah. this was the universe of like... The boys are invincible because they would just kill him. Right. Or he would like run into a wall or something and not be super strong. That's my thing. That's that, my would thing be the be- that would be the best part is if he doesn't have like the cannonball power that protects him when he's in motion yeah. and he just trips into a wall and just sh- just splatters all over the place. That's the thing that I want to see in one of these realistic like kind of superhero parodies like the I, they haven't done this in the boys, but I don't I, I haven't seen Gen V to know if they do this there, but like assuming that the speedsters have like super strength essentially or like not super strength like invincibility it's right. kind of like a given but what if like you did get speedster powers but you didn't have like invincible skin and you, and just, you accidentally like, run past a clothesline yeah or just lose your face because of wind yeah you know <laughs> yeah if you're running that fast that'd be like a great oh your power manifest let's see how fast i can go and then they just like lose their flesh from running so hard anyway Wishing a lot of bad things on Pietro. Yeah, you and are. That, Why do you hate Pietro so much? <laughs> Everyone hates him right now, right? He's a that's he's true. He has no friends right now. Then that goes to the opening credits because that was supposed to be our suspenseful thing. Uh, it's funny. It's supposed to be suspenseful. We know exactly what happened. Of course, Caliban found Pietro. I think it's a little more of the ominous thing. Yeah, like like Wanda's gonna get her wish rather mm-hmm. than suspense. But I, I know what you're saying. When it comes back from the opening credits, we're back at the mansion. They're still re- rebuilding. And yep. that gazebo elevator happens, and it just—it's just so funny looking. I think is why I like it, and yeah. it's also too obvious. It's—it's it's barely hidden, right? You know, <laughs> it's—I mean, it's barely hidden. But how many times are people gonna be walking by and seeing it come up from the top? It's not like they're using that when like they're doing like an open house, you know? Yeah, and it just—it's just something that already kind of is already seventy-five percent on the way to looking like an elevator. It's just great. I love it. It's, it's it's very convenient. So in their conversation, Evan and Kurt are talking. Evan calls out Kurt for still staying hidden, even through all this shit that's been happening. Well, because Evan is ready to, like, drop out. He doesn't want to put up with it anymore. And because he's saying that all his friends have left him. None of the skater kids who he was cutting class with are, are still around. And then Kurt's like, no, I'm sure you still have friends. And that's when he's like, oh, yeah, easy to say when you still get your image inducer on, bro. Yeah. And he, like, grabs his, his wrist. And Nightcrawler teleports away. And then Evan calls out for him. I wasn't sure if, like, that was... I think he like, felt bad. I think I think he's like, maybe I overstepped a little bit because even though I do have powers, I could pass for people who don't know kind of scenario. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think I think he felt bad about it. And then it like kind of pans past Evan to the ceiling or what's left of the roof of the mansion. <laughs> and Sunspot is like yep. recharging from the sun. I one, one of only two episodes in the entire series where he has lines. Oh, really? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and it's and sorry. It's, one of one of three, but this is the last one where he speaks. Oh, really? So, okay. And it's yeah. not even for like a superhero thing. We f- quickly find out because at first I thought, oh, they're training and they're going to make the best of the danger room. They're literally just cleaning up the mansion. And yeah, um, it was a very convoluted way 
to melt down parts of like the danger room and stuff to turn stuff into blocks. It was like five mutant powers combined to create blocks. Yeah, and it's kind of semi-redundant, right? So Beast and Storm were leading it. Although yeah. Storm wasn't doing a ton. It was mostly Beast. And and so Sunspot initiates everything. And then who who else was there? The Magma was there. Sunspot yeah. was there. It ended with Magma melting. Yeah. The it stuff. felt like it got melted twice. Yeah, so it just kind of came back around. Oh, and then other people were just, like, brushing it with, like, brooms and stuff. Maybe that's why I didn't remember, because it was just, like, a bunch of, like, kids. Right. <laughs> These kids around. cleaning. Yeah. Beast grabs, like, that metal cube and then, like, runs it out to wherever they're dumping those cubes are. The cube pile. Oh, that's who else was there. Multiple was there sweeping, so that was, like, yes. part of the... So was finally, helpful. Jamie was useful. useful. <laughs> well, maybe. We assume. We don't know if he was sweeping correctly. No, but that's why there's so many of him, because he makes up for his inefficiency with quantity. But I wonder if, like, if they were all sweeping in different directions, that's not efficient, you know? Because I think they're all facing different directions. So. Why do you hate Jamie so much, Rod? <laughs> I just think it's funny, because he's, like, so young to be in this, like, He's, like, situation. nine at yeah. best. Yeah. And he's literally, like, in this military situation. Like, even the Power Rangers were older. And his parents don't care. They did <laughs> not come to pick him up. They're like, let him stay. We don't. We they're, only have a three bedroom. Yeah, they're they're like, when he wakes up in the middle of the night and there's seven of him, we can't deal with it anymore. Yeah, and then as Beast is walking through the, I guess one of the sub basements with that giant metal cube, because I, I guess they're not dumping it outside somewhere. He's taking it somewhere lower or more within. It's construction material. Yeah, right. Scott runs by and he was like, anybody that wants to ride with me, like I'm going now. And then, like, Jean runs by, and she's still, like, messing with her hair. And then this was, like, straight out of a horror movie. Kidding is, Kitty's running through the hall, still brushing her teeth, which, relatable. But then she, like, phases through Beast, and she looks, and she's like, where's my toothbrush? And she looks back, and I kind of expected it to be a funny Beast has it in his mouth kind of thing. Like, that's gross. That's funny. But, like, she It was reaches, inside his chest. She reaches in his chest, and I was like, wouldn't he? He would have gone to cardiac arrest, even if it just displaced there's a lot of important things in there. In I area. guess the only thing is if, like, you have to assume because of his build, he's very muscly, yeah. and maybe it was in a muscle spot, which still is going to be painful and awful after the fact. Well, we know it was at least partially in his digestive system because he burps up the bubbles from the toothpaste. Oh, yeah, then, yeah, he should die. He should <laughs> be dead. Even even with cartoon the logic. The only one that that doesn't kill is Logan. Everybody yeah. else that should murder them. But even with cartoon logic, that was just so unsettling to me because, like, it wasn't, like, Looney Tunes so far removed that it was... But then it was, it was Looney Tunes with the burp. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I, was, I was like, oh, this is body horror followed by Looney Tunes <laughs> in, like, a three-second time frame. Yeah. And then they switched views to the outside of the mansion where the construction trucks are driving in past the gate. And I feel like this was an ominous, purposeful zoom in. They zoomed in on the the sign. It said, like, with confidential construction company, like, we keep your secret safe. I'm like, that. There's something that is going to pop up from there. I don't. Okay, I'm just going to look this up really quick and see if there's something that I missed. There was nothing in any of the notes on any of the wikis. But let's see what happens. And I'm going to get myself on some sort of government list. Right. It's like, how was it? There, there, There was something recently, like a national kind of, not emergency, but an alert with like national security and whatever the press release was kept reiterating that things are fine and the this tiktok creator that i saw like was like reading it they're like i feel like the more times they say things are fine i feel less fine about the situation so love i definitely have gotten on a list there is a company called confidential construction company they have job listings on talent.com zip recruiter and indeed there's also a linkedin for confidential construction and then Construction Confidential on Facebook. That's funny. Indeed is funny now because that's where that failed Willy Wonka thing in Glasgow, Scotland. Like, oh, that? From. Oh, wow. They said the listings for those, the, the actors found the listings on Indeed. Okay. <laughs> but I, but it's funny is, even if it ends up being something nefarious, this also answers something else that we've been making fun of for both shows for the whole time. It's like, who constructs stuff at this place? That people didn't get sold out from it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there is specifically like a clandestine construction company in this universe. We keep uh, our mouth shut. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we should start that. Like, we keep our mouth shut LLC. And it's just like with a blind item account. We just like, just. I really together. don't want to commit fraud, Rod. <laughs> well, no, isn't that. That's how like the American legal system works, right? You would name your company that, but it's not a promise. 
It's just like a name or something. It's just a suggestion. <laughs> or I just watched a video. This is, see, this is what YouTube is for me. Is like it should be like light enough that I can watch for lunch. This guy, I forget what he's called. Sam, some Sam Reed makes. I can't remember. He tested all the different pizza places, pizza trackers by steak by being in a stakeout van while he ordered the pizza to see if they were being truthful about the stages. When he got to Papa John's, he was like, "This is not at all accurate." Well, he's like, "They were early, but the stages weren't accurate." And then he's like, he looked at the fine print. So. Domino's actually has a patent that's several pages long about how it works. It has like algorithms and stuff. Papa John's just has an asterisk and a footnote that says this meter is purely for entertainment. <laughs> just to watch it's like a slideshow that's on a timer or something. No comment. Yeah. So even though it says pizza tracker, that doesn't mean we track pizza. That's on you if you assume that. It's like the Santa tracker from NORAD basically is what you're telling me. That feels more honest i mean you're perpetuating one of the biggest lies possible so i don't know if that's exactly more honest but wait wait till you believe in santa then i don't know however it happens in those movies i watched some of the tv version of the santa claus and jesus christ this is why we watch x-men that that is i liked the santa claus movies growing up that show was rough it was awful it It was truly awful it it pretty it, it comes pretty close if not achieves ruining the original movies and i i even watched the second season this last year why do you hate yourself well i was already dying anyway so i figured what could get worse like i couldn't see taste or hear or you know i could hear i couldn't see taste or smell so that was a good time to watch that series anyway so yeah only mention of this construction company for the entire episode yeah but they made sure to zoom in on it and linger on it long enough for you to read the company name and that tagline so that's something then they cut over to the Brotherhood house. Toad has Pietro's uniform, like his Quicksilver uniform on. And yes, it's he like does. Baggy. This was actually kind of funny because he was like, oh, like this, you know, I'm, look at me. And I like one of the jokes. Well, everybody's just like sick of it. They're like, we don't want to see him or think about him or his uniform. We, we figure out through the context of their conversation that they're cleaning the house because they're worried about Mystique coming back. Like that's how afraid of her they are is like they don't even want to be a mess. Because of what happened last time? Yeah, because of what happened last time. Like, they've seen where this has gone badly. Yeah, and so, and, and then Toad brings up a good point. He's like, why are we even cleaning his room? And so then Lance is like, okay, well, we'll do it the fast way, which was a worse way. He, like, quakes, but somehow only, like, that, I guess he's able to, like, concentrate it to that floor. So all the furniture with blob out. gets yeah. thrown out the window. Out the window. So now there's a hole in the side of the house, which I feel like is probably worse than a dirty room. Because there's a hole from where her bedroom was from when Boom Boom blew that up. <laughs> right. And these guys yeah. do not know how to fix windows. And this was more than a window. This was like the whole whole wall blew out. And just remember, this is after the government agents have already, like, gone That's into right. this building. And, like, you know, when they raid something, they're busting holes in walls. And Yeah. This poor house, man. So, or, you know, it's we're going to find out the house is a mutant because it shouldn't be structurally sound anymore. From everything that's is there a house that's a mutant the right con for this show it's no like the, but there is in moon Knight the mission because he puts together the midnight mission as like the location that is actually a possessed like demon scenario so oh nice okay yeah i was just thinking like a less cool ego or something i guess it's not a mutant either but but Krakoa yeah. is a plant that turns into an island oh i didn't know that because that's or it's the, the island series. that's the mutant itself so that's the current series right the crack Krakoa stuff yeah i haven't kept up with any of that the only thing i know about that is when storm and rogue or gene are singing unbreak my heart by tony braxton that little clip that went through but in that blast toad like stumbles out of the room and like trips because Pietro's uniform is like longer like because he's taller than Toad and he like tumbles down the hallway and busts down Wanda's door and they he has the worst line of the episode he goes oh sorry didn't mean to do that this time so he has literally stumbled into her room twice I mean I guess he doesn't have good examples of boundaries from Boom Boom so he's not assuming it for everybody else either that's true boom boom did go into the bathroom when he was like pooping and showering yeah. so yeah <laughs> and exploded him and the bathroom yeah and i guess they thought she was in there yeah because he said that but they're like oh she's gone where could she be and it's like did you, i guess yeah she's the goth girl so she's gonna be not making a whole lot of noise i don't know yep. and then the scene ends when lance basically like rips the costume off of him assuming he has clothes on underneath it and he's like god put something else on yeah the whole house has seen toad nude at this point it's disgusting i thought it was a smell thing that makes so much more sense okay that's funny back out we see like a road in the woods ish somewhere i put bus bus in the forest honestly the way it was set up 
I was like, this is 75% chance it's going to be Logan. Because this is the kind of place he just takes a bus to. I guess the only... Or a motorcycle, too. He he wasn't riding his motorcycle, so that's the 25% that was unlikely. Although Colossus (laughs) did fuck it up in the last episode, so... There you go. He might not have a new motorcycle yet. Yeah, that's a good point. And that actually makes sense for the last episode, why it took Logan so long to get back to the the mansion. Because he had to walk back, because Colossus (laughs) blew up his motorcycle. Or take a bus. We're not going to add that in last week's episode. Yeah. You have to you have to follow the thread of this dumbass yeah, yeah. show. And by dumbass show, I mean our show, not yeah. evolution. I mean, we both have our moments, right? And Wanda gets out of the bus. She walks up to Meg's diner, which is like what you think of like the all-American diners, like in a renovated Airstream kind of yeah. thing. Is that, is that right? Airstream? It's like a shiny, really shiny diner. Yeah. And he fi- she finds Pietro right away. He's like sitting in a window, so he's just not very good at the hiding thing. Yeah. And he's reading a newspaper. She walks in, and to her, you know, credit, she gives everyone fair warning. She's like, "Get the fuck out!" And then like confronts Pietro, and he. Well, I love how he tries to run away, and she literally stops his feet. Like yeah, he she, literally can't run. She like, like she. His feet. She is that powerful that she's like, no. Yeah, she tethers his feet to the floor, and he tries to. She doesn't believe him, but he tries to tell her like, "I don't know where he is. He comes to me," which that tracks because. Magneto's like old and wise enough to know that like to not do the obvious steps. Like he's already thought about Pietro being you know trackable and, and all this stuff. And he always he sends all the acolytes out to do all this stuff. So he finally gets through to her that he doesn't know where Magneto is. And so she's like, fine, I'll just make him come to me. So she throws Pietro into like a locker and then throws the locker into the freezer. And then she just tosses the freezer out the front door into the middle of the street. <laughs> yeah, and I usually I'm able to like write like on my notes what's going to happen, you know, like that split second before it happens. So I'm not behind in typing. I actually had to pause my typing because I'm like, is she going to take him or is she leaving him for the cops that are showing up? I I also thought there was a possibility that she was going to have it so the freezer would be like door down. Yeah. So you would need somebody with magnetic powers to be able to like push it over on its side to open up so he didn't like suffocate to death. That would be smart. See, they should have hired you as a writer. <laughs> no. Also, I was like 19 when this came out. I would not have been ready to write this at that point of my life. So they they do imply that the cops are who gets him because they pull out handcuffs, which I don't know what good that would have done in this for this person. I assume he was disoriented, honestly, because yeah. like she's like tossing him around. He's probably like getting his bell rung as that thing is flashing around. <laughs> like we do know he's not the most durable. He's very fast, mm-hmm. but he hasn't like shown he's a great fighter or like that he could even really like take a punch like he when he gets tripped up he gets tripped up quick and bad so so that's kind of the not the end but like the closing of this part of his storyline she found him now he's bait so then we go over to the high school principal kelly is signing papers to expel the brotherhood kids but only lance is there yeah because he's i guess He's the leader of these guys, and for now, this leadership in the Brotherhood just keeps rotating, depending on who's like been kidnapped that week or not. Right. And, and so Lance is like, "But you're the one that recruited us." And Principal Kelly's like, "And you're he's the like, one you told us to come here." And he's like, "Yes." And then he stops his sentence. Yeah. He's like, he's like this close to confirming his plan, and Lance yeah. is so dumb. It's like Kelly says yes, and it takes Lance four more sentences to figure it out. But oh, then yeah. he never still like gets the confirmation of it. Yeah, he's like, yeah, it's like you just wanted us here to fuck with the X-Men. And then Lance, like, Lance basically has telekinetic powers at this point. Between the, the throwing the furniture out of the room, and then right now, like, he quakes just the desk to pin Principal Kelly to the wall. Just to, like, kind of fuck with him. And then he just leaves. Outside, Gambit is waiting for him. I literally write it as douchebag Gambit because yeah. of the visual of the, the haircut plus the goatee. I do not like this design for Gambit. Yeah. I can't get into it. Also hanging outside of a public school during at school hours. <laughs> Which they have not given us the impression that he is not an adult. Like he's, at the, maybe he's not 30. Dude is definitely not a teenager though. Maybe yeah, he, 18, 19 at the absolute youngest, but he is too young to be at that at school. Yeah. <laughs> or too old. Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah. he's definitely too old to be at that school. <laughs> and Multiple just, is too young to be at that school. Yeah. <laughs> and so he wants to talk to Lance, like not to fight or anything, but... He said he wants Lance to get the Brotherhood guys together at their house so that he can go there, the Gambit can go there and talk to him. And Lance is like, 
no, like why? Like I just I kicked your ass. You know, I don't even know how long ago that battle was. It could have been overnight or it could have been like a couple weeks ago. We're not quite sure. Five days or so. Yeah, there's there's like mixed details that lead me one way or the other depending on which. It's like they're living at the mansion again, but it's Xavier gave the kids two hours notice before going back to school. Like, yeah, yeah I think so. this is all like a week and a half like time frame. Honestly, right. I guess yeah. that would make sense. Like the school's closed. Or something. I don't know. I don't. And then we catch up with Rogue, who's sitting on a bench outside. I'm assuming this is all kind of like in a generally same similar area, like not in earshot of each other, but they're all outside. Yeah, it's like kind of like the quad scenario. Yeah, and she overhears some kind of faceless girls walking by, talking about Rogue being like one of them. So, we got reference. According to the wiki, the girls' names are Patty Simcox, which probably doesn't mean as much to you, Uh, and Sandy D. I don't know. Like the two friends from Greece. Oh, okay. (laughs) Oh, okay. More than references. Yeah, so those are character names inspired by like a pop culture thing that they just like inserted and because you never call the character out by name, like sure, it could show up in the script that way, but yeah. Oh, speaking of references, back in the, which ep- what episode was it with the music video with the girls? Walk on the Wild Side. The, yeah. Someone had mentioned, or you had mentioned, like, that there was Empire Records reference. Yes. So, I don't know how. either. That I was had, the, the dancing around with the hands up in the air spot. Yeah. I don't know how. Either I watched it when I was a kid and forgot it, but I didn't remember anything. A couple weeks ago, over the weekend, I watched Empire Records because that just straight up sounds like a movie that I would like because I love High Fidelity and... Yeah, any of the movies that take place in a record. I'm store. actually shocked to hear that you like you have not watched it on a regular basis. Right well, now, I will. So yeah, I, I I watched it and I loved it. I'm all I I actually posted after watching it that it was a little bittersweet watching it because no one will ever love music like that anymore. And that I don't feel like that's even hyperbolic because yeah, I know individual people will, but there's not a case where like someone's gonna hire a bunch of kids for a clearly unprofitable record store. To just like all hang out and even though that sounds like a movie thing i knew record stores like that i don't know if they were like fronts for drug rings or something but anyway yeah, i watched it and then i was like i i was like that's the scene that they were referencing because there's there's that scene where they're opening up the record store and it's straight up and it's funny that it happened in reverse i recognize the dancing from evolution and then you see renee zellweger and uh, Liv tyler yeah like dancing around the record store I was like okay yeah this is, this is funny i'm getting more references like after the fact we still have yet to find the reference to She's All That, which is on one of the wikis, mm-hmm. and nobody has corrected that one yet. So again, I'm not going to go rewatch She's All That, because that would be the easy solution. Yeah. But I don't want to rewatch She's All That. That's the hard part. <laughs> I feel like I am being pointed by the universe to watch that movie, because I definitely did not watch that movie when it came out. First date I ever went on was Took a Girl to really? That Movie. I, Even though I have personally visually parodied that, that movie cover, I haven't watched the movie but fucking Sixpence, scumbag Rob. Sixpence on the richer like really liked one of my videos i did about them and like reposted it and thanked me for talking about it so i was like all the signs are pointing there might be an x-men evolution reference Sixpence. i think most people know they did kiss me that was that iconic steer scene maybe i should watch this you maybe say like most it. people know that but here's the problem dude we are now at the era where like references to nintendo 64 stuff some people are like i wasn't alive when that came out and it's like oh i hate it i hate it so much <laughs> Yeah, Mar- Mario Kart came out in 96 and Generation Z started in 97. And it's like, oh, God, just going to throw myself under a truck. Yeah. So anyway, Rogue. Rogue hears the girls from Greece talking Greece, shit. Yeah. And before, that was a fucking tangent, by the way. Yeah. She doesn't get to acknowledge them before noticing Evan getting mugged on school property. By MAGA bully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that was the same bully as before, right? It yes. Like Drew... Bally, Cali, Dally, I don't know. His first name was Drew, though. And they're We found the spot in the script where I can't read my own writing. <laughs> and they're trying to get him to spike out. I guess they had done enough or seen enough things that they knew that's one that's something he could do. Well, and they're, and they're basically him. like doing the whole like we're going to get you to use your powers and we're going to get you kicked out. Like that now yeah. that is a constant threat that these kids have to deal with is Yes, they're allowed in the school, but apparently if they do show their power, it's going to be used against them. Yeah. Oh, and that's and that's really timely, too, because that was in that era of like the don't ask, don't tell. Right. Or shortly thereafter, at the very least. It would have been. 90s. I think it was after. I want to say it was 90s, like yeah. Cl- Clinton administration. Yeah. So like kind of a little bit it, within like memory or. Oh, like it was that it was absolutely within recent yeah. memory. I just so, don't I don't remember when it got repealed. Yeah. 
And so, yeah, so they were like egging him on to try to get him to spike out. Also very dangerous. Was well, It's very similar to like Scott and Duncan. It's like, do you want him to blast your head off? These kids are like, they're not like poking him with a stick from a distance. They're like on him and trying to get him to the spike out. <laughs> do you want to be impaled? Is that what you want to do? Yeah, like throw the dude in a bear hug and see how this goes for you. <laughs> yeah. And so like I was kind of cheering Evan. I was like, do it. They yeah. can't tell on you if they're dead. Yeah. And Evan's <laughs> kind of like, fuck it. I don't care. He mm-hmm. spikes out and then he literally can't retract. That was interesting because I don't think we've seen that before, right? Where he is unable to control the retraction part. No, we've seen that Evan has different levels of like how big the spikes are and and what it does. I want to say in like season one, there was a time where his stuff looked like armor almost that it was popping out when he was possessed by Mesmero. It was like he was bigger. So I don't know if it's maybe like his lack of confidence usually is like why he's holding back. But this time when he's like, I don't care anymore. That's when he becomes more dangerous. Yeah. And then Rogue does like the Black Widow, the Hulk thing with him yeah like the sun's getting real low <laughs> yeah like and then like you gotta chill it. the fuck out dude and then yeah. he just he ruins yet another outfit <laughs> because there's just spike holes out th- you know throughout his shirt i'm glad that they verify that though that like yes he also he ruins a frames every time he does that's why he doesn't wear shirts with sleeves because right because he would ruin sleeves on everything yeah. <laughs> yep. and so the bullies run away from that situation but they like run into Gambit because they're trying to go sell him out to Principal yeah, to Kelly. Him. That was, I guess, that was part of the the tension of Evan not being able to pull the spikes back in. Is that if they told on him and the principal could see it, then things. Because you know uh, that dude is just sitting from his window with binoculars right now, just right. looking for all the ex kids. Yeah, yeah. So then the kids before they can get to Principal Kelly, like physically run into Gambit. Gambit, as is, an adult at the school, threatens the children. Yeah, <laughs> he he grabs a pencil and blows it up and scares the shit out of them. Yeah, does he like stick it in a tree to so yeah. like to like blow up part of a tree? And he's like, yeah, just don't fuck with mutants, okay? Yeah. And uh, once again, these kids don't know what he can do. Is like, is he omnipotent? They don't know. Like, <laughs> they're gonna find out. I mean, it's kind of like the whole thing of like you know snitches get stitches. Yeah. I think because if 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 he found out that Spike got in trouble, who are you going to assume was the one who did it? Then, Maga, Maga Bully, who's literally Rogue, wearing a shirt with a Captain America star on the front of it. Yeah, all right. I remember Granny Potty Mouth. She sent me this thing about all the different fandoms and like someone you know, kind of explaining they all have to do with some marginalized group. She's like, how true are all these? I was like, I can only comment on a few of these. But like, it's like, yes, so many people like misuse the Punisher logo. A lot of people don't understand what the X-Men are about. Like, I showed her a picture of the Friends Humanity from the X-Men trailer. And she was like, I've never seen X-Men. And even I know what that is. Yeah, I mean, Captain America's first issue was literally punching Hitler across the face. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, who knew? I so I told her that, too. I was like, uh, yeah. And she knows Scott and I wonder. I was like, Scott did a whole video on. Oh, yeah, that was one of the first ones you had to help him sponsor. Where he's punching. It's like, can we not have not can we not say time? times in the sponsored content piece? <laughs> no. Okay, okay, I'll let the brand know. Yeah. So then Rogue bumps into gambit because she's presumably running after the bullies yeah and then there's like this kind of it's another it wasn't as tense as i thought it was going to be but another like kind of awkward run in between those two because everyone outside the show knows their history yep. so she's like you again and you can't quite tell what that interaction is for him you can tell she's disgusted you can't tell yeah. what he's kind of like is that why he was hanging outside the school but is she <laughs> actually disgusted or is it like the i'm putting on a front that i'm disgusted oh yeah i don't know it's really hard to read after that first interaction that they had at the the fight. <laughs> that was the weird one. That was the super awkward one. I was like, Whoa, yeah. This is Are you guys gonna like, fuck or fight right now? Because <laughs> you got you. It's a very thin line. And so he just kind of walks away. This very uneventful. He, he, he turns around, and walks away. So at that point, Kitty walks up sees recognizes gambit and rogue is like yeah we should follow just to be safe like she kind of like nancy drews it a little bit okay yeah nancy drew is a reference i haven't heard in a while and then back at the brotherhood house blob is doing that like once again they go back and forth between like looney tunes and kind of realistic he's like doing the looney tunes thing where he's like shoving all the shit into the closet and then the door's bending and he like is able to like displace physics shove it into the the closet right he's like this will be fine Unless something happens, and then Lance walks in and makes something happen. He's having like a temper tantrum and makes everything quake, and of course everything avalanches out of the, the closet. Right. And Blob's like, oh, shucks. And then Lance is like, we we gotta get out of here before someone shows up. And they're like, who is it? And then that's when like the card, the charge card like gently floats down. <laughs> He's like, oh, that guy. And I love that the charge has different levels of charge to it. Like he could overpower it, because that 
card blowing up was way bigger than a lot of other stuff. Yeah. No. And that, that house is done now. The house is so fucked. And then he jumps through a window to get inside. <laughs> yeah, he starts a he starts a fight. He's the highlight of that was that he traps Toad in was like a rug. Like wraps him up. It was like a rug or like a, or curtain, a curtain and yeah. And then he charges I don't know for sure, but it looked like he charged the rug and Toad. If you go by comic book logic, he can't do anything organic. I don't even know anymore because like Mystique maybe is he's, turning into hawks and shit. Like. Maybe he's covered in <laughs> such a layer of dirt that it's the dirt layer on top of Toad that was charged. There you go. That's, that's a head cannon. Yeah. If, if um, it's been a month since his shower, he yeah. can't. It's like literally a layer of sludge on top of him. I'm going to go with there you that. Go. Yeah. He sometimes trash holds things together. So like, <laughs> like Toad's body. Yeah, yeah, or that house. Maybe that's the head cannon. Is all that garbage is holding that house structure together? Yeah, but yeah, he he's like, you know, either you're gonna listen to me talk, or I'm gonna presumably explode. You know, do what he threatens to, to murder it. Toad. Like he's yeah, like, he's like, this is not thieves guild. This is assassins guild shit. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, okay, we'll we'll listen. But then he still doesn't discharge Toad, and Toad's yeah. like, hey, so can can we disarm real quick? And yeah, they. They talk and they're like, Magneto wants to recruit you to rescue a mutant. And they're like, which which mutant? And they're like, Pietro. Well, it's not just recruit you. It's you have a chance to prove yourselves. Yeah, yeah. Again, I guess, because this happened first season. Well, Toad has always failed. Toad has never yeah. <laughs> passed the test. But it's also like, yeah, they recruited them and, and they proved themselves. And then they still failed. Like yeah. the big fight. So then we kind of like pan outside. Rogue and Kitty have caught up. I don't think they see what happened inside, but right. they see the Brotherhood guys like leaving. And so they go to follow him. And there's this crazy sequence of Kitty phasing her and Rogue through a set of box trucks and like the trunk of an old person's car. I, I started like writing down names of companies. I They, they don't have any meaning. It's, yeah. Like one of them was, it was like, like Bulldog, Bulldog Trucking Company Stott. Yeah. S-T-O-T-T, the trunk of the old people's car, and then into a meat truck. Yeah, so all it was random, but also it was, it was exciting, but like once again, a little bit of anxiety inducing, because we, you know that they're going to be fine, but like that visceral response in you is like this Kitty's going to sneeze and Rogue's going to lose an arm. Yeah, so she's <laughs> like half in phase, half out of phase as she's doing stuff too, because it's like yeah. if Rogue is still going through the wall, you have to make sure she's phased, otherwise your feet are going to go through the floor of the truck. The I physics love, of Evolution Kitty are just <laughs> killing me. I love the, I think it was the first box truck they were in. Kitty phases her head through to the front cab so she can see where the Jeep is going. Right. And the driver briefly sees her, but they made sure to put like a little alien bobblehead in front so that this is like a conspiracy theorist. So even like, not the Kitty knew that, but even if this woman said something, it would have been like she's insane or whatever. Right. You know, like, even though this world already knows about mutants. But, <laughs> but yeah, but this whole sequence was crazy and going through all the different the vehicles and stuff they do find lance's jeep but he's already like abandoned it and yeah you you do get a little bit of a uh indication of time change because it started to get darker out too we do see like a little bit away from it the lance and the rest of the brotherhood are like ready to jump the escort caravan that is presumably holding pietro that's very similar to the caravan that had magneto in the pride of the x-men oh yeah you know? Yeah, the, the only real difference to it is there was not somebody who was like in the the cell car with Pietro. But yeah, yeah like, the rest like, was very similar. Like chewing a cigar, like, yeah, you'll never get me. That's not how it went in that either, Rod. <laughs> That's how it was in my head. So he he quakes the cliff, I guess, because once again, they have to ride on the, drive on the side of a mountain and attacks the caravan. It disarms most of the vehicles. The tank that, like, or I guess tank that Pietro's in, pretty much stays intact it doesn't really mess that up yet i wouldn't call it a tank i think it's a little more of just like an armored vehicle it's almost okay. like an armored truck you know what you'd put a high powered prisoner in scenario yeah. and they and they wanted to make sure that he could see have a view so they put a window in it too yeah. <laughs> and, and they don't lock him up really they just like yeah, he could wander knows. around in there they, they want him to like wear himself out yeah and so the rest of the guys kind of take on various attack stances but blob i think goes to specifically where pietro is Mm -hmm. to bust him out but since he's kind of dumb he's doing more harm he's like doing less breaking out and more like pushing it over the cliff i will say of all the times we've seen toad really suck 
He's actually super effective against the military guys here. Yeah, because he's kind of just ricocheting off. Everybody, yeah, like right? they, 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 I mean, they also specified to use tasers and not guns specifically, mm-hmm. but they're going for it and they're just taking people out. Yeah. And then Rogue and Kitty kind of intervene and specifically save one of the soldiers, Major Kyle. Major Kyle, and, called out by name, Major Kyle. Yeah. And they make sure that, like, not that Rogue and Kitty do, but, like, the show itself makes sure that we know that it was clear to him who they were versus right. the Brotherhood. And and then Rogue just kind of, like, wanders off and absorbs Lance, which is good. He's like, we, he's like, we, and it wasn't, I don't feel like it was even to really get his powers. It was just, to like, shut him down. Yeah, I, I think going. this version of Rogue is less about how do I use your power myself as much as, like, how do I stop you? scenario yeah. and then that's like she's when, a she's a defensive rogue as opposed to offensive yeah and then that's when blob has fucked with the the vehicle enough that it starts falling off the cliff with pietro in it and the thing he's holding on to is not secured to the right. vehicle it just pops off yeah it was just like i don't know if the turret is the right so it was some random like extension piece or something yeah and uh, kitty actually phases in and dives saves. over the cliff and and snags him mm-hmm. and then also as they like phase back out of it is able to get a grip on the side of that cliff too yeah it's wild but then pietro just like fucks off immediately okay i had to replay the audio three times with what he said <laughs> just about muffed that slow poke i heard the slow poke part i didn't hear the muffed it i dude i do not remember muffed it ever being <laughs> afraid i can't tell if i did or i'm rewriting that because it makes sense like it didn't it doesn't sound weird to me when he says it i think maybe i'm thinking of miffed but miffed is like being yeah. pissed off yeah so muffed i, I don't know, know dude. i've actually heard that it was i was just like wait what did he say and then i replayed it i was like i still don't understand it and it's one of the times where I turned on captions of like, what am I hearing right now? Because like we talked about, I am 90% sure that they up the tempo of his speech for the oh, character. That makes sense. Yeah. So we got to add that to like hood for evolution, urban dictionary. <laughs> right. But then, <laughs> then he is able to run off. Wanda watches the whole thing. We find out that she's been like observing this whole situation and is like, well, yeah, plan B, I guess. So she's going to try again later. I love that there's zero indication that her teammates that, I mean, granted, she's only been on a team with them for like two full fights at this point. Mm-hmm. And she's just like, I, whatever, I don't really care about them. Yeah. yeah. Like she wasn't going to like stop Pietro from getting tossed over the, the cliff. She was actually <laughs> probably hoping for it. Yeah, because she still feel, feels very betrayed by him, especially because he saved Magneto when yeah. she was trying to you know, off him. But then Rogue does use Lance's powers. And quakes like the Brotherhood away, but they they end up getting away. Yeah, they're they're able to have enough distance between that she's not able to get them. And also is like, oh cool, you're destroying the road that's going back to the town that you need to get to. Kitty's like, yeah, let him go. He's already too far gone. And then she's mad about Pietro, and she says the phrase which, looking back in hindsight, I probably didn't mean what it means now, but she goes, I'll slow poke him. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and I was like, okay, we got it, Kitty. Like you said, there's a fine line of fuck or fight, right? Is and obviously, Pietro's got to be into some interesting shit if Kitty thinks that that's a possibility. But they get interrupted when all of the army guys are guns drawn on them. Yeah, they're like, we got to get them because they're probably disoriented and they're like they just see her using earthquake powers and they know that's what's been happening we gotta get right it. and that's when major kyle comes back out major kyle he's like nope she's she's one of the good ones he's like how do you know it's like i saw it myself you know right and he had an interesting like nice little dialogue it wasn't just that his life got saved he's like no we're also peacekeepers like even and he didn't say this but the impression we get from these characters is there are people in this universe that are well-meaning but still doing the wrong thing so even though like maybe actually actually them having pietro captive is probably a good thing yeah but they don't know the difference and well at that point they are just following orders it's it's when there's a situation with a judgment call like this of like oh do we shoot the teenage girls with a taser or not? <laughs> and to your point about them like destroying the road back he's like well we'd offer you a ride except that we don't have any vehicles yeah we're out of cars right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and also there's no road so to figure that out and storm i I guess they radio storm is that what they do kitty's like no we're gonna we're gonna walk and we're gonna call scott like she literally is like because that that's one of the things like earlier she's like should we call scott and rogue's like no let's go fuck it yeah back at the brotherhood house gambit 
yells at them for failing for being again. losers which one would imagine would happen when you hire losers they would be right. losers was it this point or earlier that they said like that's what we do we're losers x-men are winners yeah that was they right said there. It some they said it, yeah they said it at some point yeah and they're in the but game it's like two th- two quick references on screen at that point there was a bucket that was the wrong colors but it was definitely a kfc bucket Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, for, and then like Blob problem. was reading a comic book, and it literally looked like Mystique because it was a blue person with red hair. I noticed that too, and that's why I was wondering: is that was that supposed to be like a comic in universe? Kind of like how? But didn't Logan have like X Men comics in it? Yes, like but di- but different reasons, I I believe. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But there was one of the wikis actually said that it was like referencing a scene from x-men 92 but i couldn't identify what the scene was so who knows mm, yeah i don't i don't think it, but it, it, it definitely either. was a blue mutant with some form of power and red hair is is what it looked like to me and so gambit's like well i'm here to offer you new leadership and they're like who's gonna who's gonna lead us and then enter pietro well the best part is gambit's like not me like yeah, he's like i don't want this shit show yeah he's just, i'm just a lackey this being blackmailed probably i don't know i feel like <laughs> He's the one who's like probably kind of in on it. Oh, oh, he's I'm just, sorry. Or he's just getting paid. Yeah. I can't say the one because, you know, Pyro obviously doesn't give a shit. And then Sabretooth is like, yeah, let's kill Wolverine. Yeah. So. And then back at the X Mansion, Kitty and Rogue are kind of just, I don't know, accepting their fate. Yeah. They're, they're owning fess- up to it. They're fessing up to Scott and Xavier about what they did. But to your point, like, they're kind of like, well, it was dangerous, but, you know, you did the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> Scott was like, you know, it was kind of like a lame execution, but the motives weren't, so it's okay kind of scenario. Yeah. It's like, except you're still going to have to go to deten- detention Saturday for skipping six period, which was something that Kitty was legitimately worried about er- earlier in the episode. Right. It was funny because that's a very like of the time ending because it was like, you're going to you're going to have to go to detention for skipping six period. Full house music. And right. Pan out and Xavier's like doing that creepy smile. <laughs> well, because he also makes the quick comment of like, you know, sometimes you you can't address every single problem, so it's almost yeah. like the you know pick your battles scenario. That, that's ex- how it ended. We learned that Kitty and Rogue got detention, but not for all the destruction for skipping one class. Yep i I don't know what the what that word says, so we're oh. just going to assume that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, happy ending. Yeah, I just had like it was a slow zoom out with like weirdly sentimental music for what yep. was just said. It feels like one of those episodes of Family Matters where they all learn to accept Steve Urkel one more time. They're like, oh, Steve. <laughs> the one person who should not have been accepted in that show is the dude who is scamming on your daughter who constantly says no and cannot take no for an answer. Yeah. And then genetically changes himself. Yeah. <laughs> that show yeah, got whatever. weird. Yeah. Well, remember? Because that, that was show, in right. universe with other shows on TGIF. Yeah. yeah. Perfect Strangers. Because the mom worked with Cousin Larry, I think. Yeah. Right. And also Family Matters was the one where the little sister went upstairs one day and then never, and never came, came back. back. They <laughs> kept Cousin Richie, but they did not keep the, the young daughter. Yeah. Anyway, any other any other thoughts? No, I do agree with what you said about a month ago that had our timing worked out that we got to like the end of season two with the cliffhanger, it would have been a more appropriate time for it. But yeah. I also didn't want us to have like four weeks of right. of show without show as we await 97 to debut literally days, two days from when this episode goes live to feeds. So, yeah. so now you're going to have to stay in suspense for nine or ten weeks of what happens after Rogue and Kitty get detention. Or they can watch the episode. They don't They don't have to wait for us to watch the episode. They might want to do a refresher, but they don't need to wait for us for that. So. No, we're, you're, you're locked out of your Disney Plus account. I think <laughs> Disney Plus is actually doing that on March 14th or something. Oh, really? They're, they're, they're Xing out the shared accounts, even mm-hmm. though they allow eight people to be on an account, but or the, supposedly. Okay. It, cool. it also times with them releasing Taylor Swift's concert film, so I feel like it's not a coincidence. Oh, yeah. There was a thing that, <laughs> that popped up in there. Well, speaking of accounts being like locked out and stuff like that, during the Facebook outage that happened the day of this recording, Rod got a prompt if he wanted to log into my account, which I was not expecting. Yeah, that was weird. I like just I was able to figure out how to take it off of there. Right. I don't know how that was on there. It was probably because of having a shared account for the the, the podcast Facebook. That's what I kind of assumed, but it right. was just weird that it would like. It's not a good thing. Your, I'll say that. Your, your, and it did it for Messenger too. I had to take it off of Messenger. Weird. But either way, like, 
yeah anyway it, yeah it was, it was it was pretty odd and then the funny was, thing of all of it i never got logged out or anything so like i see all really? these like yeah everybody's posting about it and like on like twitter and everything and i was like everything works for me i think this was the first time there was a facebook or instagram outage where i just happened to be online at that time right and it was another by chance thing because it was pretty early but i just had happened to wake up and i don't know it was one of those things where like well i can't go back to sleep in two seconds so i'm just gonna roll over and see what notifications i have and i was reading some comments that some a bunch of people left on one of my posts and then I got logged out in the middle of reading it. I was like, that's odd. It let me log back in like the second time. But then when it bumped me out that that time, that's when it showed both the accounts. And then I like, was like, this is weird. And then it just started only loading certain things. I was like, I was so creepy. And then it kept telling me like passwords were wrong. And I was just like, I'm getting hacked. Like this is happening right now. Right. Because normally that's what it would feel like if you find out it's only you. And then Elon Musk is like literally licking his chops because they're coming back to my platform. And it's like, nobody's, <laughs> they're coming back to your platform to see if the other one is down, not because they like your platform. I thought I saw something about there being like some sort of outage for almost every platform today. Well, it was. It was I, didn't, I didn't experience it, but I it was all things before. meta were were the outage. Yeah. So, well, yeah, definitely meta, because uh, Instagram did the same thing for me because I had some notifications there too. I wasn't I wasn't like actively in Instagram when it went down, but right. like it went, it did what you showed me where it, like it wouldn't load more stuff. But there was somebody, a few people showing screenshots of down detectors showing like like YouTube and Twitter and stuff were all down for a large number of people at the same time. I don't know. I didn't personally experience it, so I don't. I don't know. Anyway, that was it's funny, and it, it was a relatively short outage. I want to say it was like an hour or two. Max. Right. Yeah. By the Something. time I started my work day, it was already back up. So. Yeah, that's right. When I got the text from you, I was like, "Well, I think we're back," because I I was literally in my middle of my workout, and my phone just went insane all at once, like rapid fired that notification sound. Oh yeah, hey, I remember. I, like when you got locked out of our Instagram posting, <laughs> and we had thirty-five things go live at once, all with the Lee Waltz. I mean, yeah. To 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 cap up this episode, we literally had to message the Lee Waltz and be like, "We're sorry for the thirty-five notifications you're going to hit because everything is going live at once right now on the Instagram from Rod." So, and this was what was great about how Meta works, and I'm I'm not afraid to put them on blast here because they don't help me. I, <laughs> I was actually at VidCon when all this went down and walked over to the Meta Lounge where they had a Meta help desk mm -hmm. with the sign over that said, ask us anything. And I brought <laughs> them my I brought them my device. And I was like, why? At that point, nothing had posted. It was all in limbo. And I was like, what is happening here? And no one knew. And I think you even said then, it's like, well, technically, they only advertise ask us anything. They didn't say that they would answer anything. Yeah, they didn't say we could like, solve anything. <laughs> and then they tried to offer me like a T-shirt and a sticker. I'm like, no, I want this fixed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't see a better way that we can wrap up this episode right. as we prepare for 97 yeah I, this actual season for us so next week you will join with us to experience the continuation of a 30 year old series to find out what happened to the X-Men a couple years after we, we left them last time <laughs> We get the origin of Storm's hair a week later in comic book form, which we already spoiled some of the visuals for, yeah. which is fine. And yeah, I'm I'm excited. I I don't know. It's 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 gonna be it's gonna be a good time, and excited to talk about it too. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff, but join us next week for that. We're finally doing it, and thanks for sticking in here with us. Rod's gonna cry, guys. Just stuff. so you know. <laughs> so yeah, next week. X-Men 97, finally, unless they push it again. I will drive to your house and slap you if that <laughs> right. happens. But then we can carpool to Burbank to Good. Disney. Yes, great. To yell at them. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. If you have any thoughts, make sure to drop them in the comments for either the YouTube upload or official Instagram post about this episode. If you like what you heard, we appreciate a rating on the podcast app you're choosing. You can find us on the newly revamped Apple Podcast if you did the 17.4 update. iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, and CastBox. It looks the same. It is the largest, smallest update. I was going to say, I was literally playing podcasts earlier and I saw no difference.